welcome. Hello. Welcome to Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm Coley D with my awesome co-host, the original Rick Ross. Hello, everybody. And we are super excited to introduce David Sean Cook today. Welcome, David. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Now, David's been a part of Crazy Blessed Worship in the Facebook group for a while. And uh, he had recently posted and offered a help with production. And I was going, you know what? I've been in two inner circles with David now. <laughs> like, I know he has a lot of knowledge and things to share with you guys and um, such a huge music background. So I'd like to start, if you could kind of give us a little rundown in, in your background in the music industry. Um, well, I, I kind of, my parents say that I was born with music in my blood because I, as, as a baby, I was, would bang my head up against the couch every time music was on. And, um, but I started uh, being in bands in junior high. Well, I started in choir. And then I started uh, forming bands, uh, rock bands and things like that, played high school dances and all that kind of thing. Um, and then I just really, it's what I wanted to do for a career um, ever since I can remember. I didn't know what else. I didn't have a desire to do anything else, really. Um, I was raised... Uh, with church values and went to church as a as a boy and a young man and I like till I got into my rebellious teenage years and then I didn't uh, didn't stick with that um, I was still a believer obviously and everything but um, I wanted to, there wasn't anything going on in Christian music at that time you know the church I belonged to for instance you know you, piano and organ that was all that was allowed. You know, so yeah. traditional hymns and all that kind of thing. I think Amy Grant was just getting started. So I'm really dating myself here. <laughs> but um, but I ended up uh, getting out of high school and the, and the band I was with at the time, we said, well, we, if we want to make it or try to make it, we can't do it here. So we actually loaded up and moved to Boston. And I was there for about 13 years. Oh, wow. um, and we did quite well, came close to getting signed. Uh, we would have been signed, um, but uh, uh, Casablanca Records at the time wanted 51% art artistic control, and that isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, nobody's going to tell me what I have to write and uh, what that, that kind of thing. So, um, But, you know, life went on. Uh, people get married and things drift apart. And I bet actually made a promise to the Lord that, um, uh, I, you know, I quit music altogether at that point. And I said, I will not play music again unless I play it for you. And so it took about five or that took a long time for me to get started playing Christian music. I played in churches a lot but actually really trying to do recording and that kind of thing uh, that started in about 2019. So. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, one thing that I, I, I want people to know from a Christian standpoint is when I, you know, I made a very conscious decision when I went to play music for the world. I mean, I actually told the Lord that I, ha I have to do this. I have to go and experience life and what's out there. And I'll come back to you, you know what I mean, and it, later on. And the Lord is gracious. I mean, that's, that's not a good prayer <laughs> because it took me a long, long, long time to get back and get right with God. Um, as much as I wanted to, you know, you pick up things from the world, you pick up, you know, that kind of lifestyle, music lifestyle is really, can be really, really bad uh, and unhealthy. And, you know, so I think people can understand. I got involved in a lot of things I didn't want to get involved in, so... <laughs> It took a long time to come back 
uh, and a lot of surrender. So, and humble, becoming very humble again. So, but since then, I've, you know, I'm like gung ho pretty much. Um, I did release an album in 2019, and now I'm just doing, and then I had a few years I didn't do anything, and now I'm doing singles. And during that time, I built my own recording studio in my home. Uh, I do do other projects for other people from time to time. Um, it's not my main focus, but I love to help people out with whatever production or recording needs that they, they might have. Um, and I love to, I love to write and, and just record my, you know, record the songs that I feel the Holy Spirit's giving, giving me, you know, um, and he's taking me in a new direction, uh, with everything that's going on in the world. Uh, um, I mean, we can talk about that later, but because I feel like I'm just rambling here, but um, I'm interested. So. Give you guys a chance to say <laughs> to say something. <laughs> well, we oh. just get so sucked in. I think listening to people's stories, yeah. we're just like, yeah, go on. You guys, you guys, yeah. Stories, right? yeah. I yeah. was uh, curious. Is okay? You, you you ended up in Boston, so after Boston, did you go back to Indi uh, Indiana or Michigan? I think you, you, you were some part. You were you were in Indiana, I believe, right? And then you went back to Michigan. Well, yeah. Well, my dad was a was a construction worker in. Uh, he was, he was a boilermaker, which is a welder. Um, mm -hmm. But, and he, we moved around when I was a kid. We, we were never in more, in one town more than, a, more than a year or two at the most growing up. So um, Indiana is where we settled down as a family mm -hmm. um, and where I went to high school at. Um, and I got married uh, when I was in Boston. And I did not want to raise my child in Boston, so uh, the city. Um, and so I moved back, back here, and ended up in, in right over the border from Indiana and Michigan. Oh. So I'm very close, like five miles from where I grew up. You know? Oh, really? Wow. That's so, cool. yeah. Well, I want to ask a couple questions. Like one of the things that you were talking about, it made me think about um, the importance of discernment when it comes to um, do you sign on with a company or not? Um, when you're talking about like 51% and that was a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously you knew that, no, this isn't going to work out. And I think there's so many people today that still hold on to that. I, I need a record deal, right? I need to sign with somebody. And, and that's where my credibility is going to come from. And they cling on that. And we're in such a world now that, um, you know, like him or love him, like Tom McDonald, look at him as an independent artist, does all of his stuff. He's not signed at all. He's an example of many other artists now, like, um, Manifest, Chris Greenwood is uh, one of the inner circles that uh, David and I were a part of for a long time. And you know, he's an independent artist. So he, he's like, I'm, I'm done with the record label stuff. He's He doesn't even know if he wants to ever tour again. And it's interesting looking at um, what we've been taught for so many years. Like, I need this to, to make it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is like such a time really for for creatives to be independent and take that control. So um, I want to highlight a really quick story. Um, there's Jamie Kimmett is a pretty well-known Christian musician that um, he's from Scotland and he had this story where he was a newer believer and I'm going to really paraphrase that. I'm sure I won't tell it as well as Jamie. But <laughs> he had gone and talked to this person who was like, you know, let's see what the Lord has for you. And she had just like opened up a Bible. And for some reason it came to the, um, something like, I think he was talking about how you shall not sacrifice your firstborn son to Molech. And he's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> he just has like no clue, but you know, there was this insistence there's something to it. And I know it's not necessarily that we, we should treat a Bible like a magic eight ball and be like, boom, you know, whatever it says, this is our answer, but there was something that it can be used in certain yeah. things like, Lord, I'm, I need an answer. And it was really interesting just hearing his story here where he was later in, in this big boardroom, all, all these big wig executives wanted to sign him. 
And for some reason, he paused for a moment before signing. And somebody at that table said, what are you waiting for? There are people that would give their firstborn son for this deal. And he walked away. Ooh, so yeah. there, that's a good there, story. Isn't, it was just so powerful. And yeah. I mean, he's, he's out there and he's, you know, doing great, but it's like, sometimes like God gives us those little inner things that, you know what, maybe this isn't right. And I love how you talked about um, like basically saying, I'll play for you. We just had Christian Acker from right, our, was Rick Pino's inner circle that we had met him mm -hmm. through. Um, mm -hmm. He said the exact same exact thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. And I was telling about a story where, you know, I, I had prayed a use me prayer and, and surrendering everything to him. And it's so interesting seeing what happens when a Christian takes their creativity and surrenders it to him and what happens. And um, you have some interesting stories. I know you're like a testimony person. I know like stuff that he says, <laughs> you can just pick up like David's got some testimonies. Um, <laughs> I want to know what changed in you, in in your music and everything going forward. Obviously, you're you're shifting it. You're not going to do anything else for him. Um, do you have any fun testimonies for us out of that surrender? Um. Well, I you know I. I it's 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 kind of like you're for me it's when i when i surrendered and gave everything back you know and gave myself to the lord about the music and, and everything all of me as you know as much as i can you know um that's when the war started you know what i mean uh that's that's when i really started being attacked by the devil and and all that kind of stuff uh I mean, the, the, the devil doesn't care if we go to church. The devil doesn't care, uh, you know, if we, you know, walk around in our, a lot of churches, isolated little church life and don't have any impact on anybody or not trying to impact anybody or, or that kind of thing. But as soon as you get active, you know, uh, and uh, start standing and serving and that kind of thing uh you 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 need to know that you need to be prepared for what's going to happen because it's i've been attacked a lot um with what i'm trying to do um and and you know and and, and just the way the world is today i mean it, it's so it's so frustrating and aggravating to me that you know two three years ago Facebook took everything about religion off their platform. I mean, you can't, you know, I can look up Billy Idol, <laughs> you know, when I go to do an ad, sounds like Billy Idol, but if I want to say sound like, uh, you know, Mercy Me or anything like that, you can't find it. There's nothing. It's all been, it's all, you can't even find a preacher. You can't even find Billy Graham on Facebook. When you run an ad, uh, it's so, and Google's just about as bad. Um, and I just think that that's pathetic, but um, because we have to be really, really creative in advertising to to find an audience. We know there's millions of people out there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But that's finding them, we exist to yeah. highlight these yeah. these Christian creatives that are getting squashed in the algorithm. And I know, like hashtagging the word Christian these days is like the death of whatever you're trying to promote because, mm -hmm. Oh, that word's gone. It's an algorithm word. That's a no, no. And right. uh, it's like learning the different hashtags. A lot of people have no idea how to break through these things just to be able to be seen, which is one of the reasons I am so gung ho about networking and, and being the body and lifting each other up because that's how we're going to spread the kingdom. And sure. uh, when we work together in like, you know what, I'm, I'm always saying this in the interviews anyway, Rick knows this is I want people, whoever we have on here, you know, mm -hmm. find David, like, love, comment, subscribe, especially share, because that is our only workaround really with mm -hmm. some of these algorithm things. So right. um, I just, I really, 
I appreciate that you brought that up because a lot of people, they don't know, they can't, can't target a, a Christian audience in an ad. Anymore. Yeah. You, yeah it's, it's impossible to do so. I mean, the, 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 the only, there is one thing you can find, but and it's the movie, the passion of the Christ that's still there, which is pretty amazing. Right. But, um, but that's about it that I've been able to find. So it's so interesting um, how that works. Right. But one of the things I wanted to, to talk about is, is, is I mentioned earlier that my, my the Lord has, has kind of turned my music into a little bit of a different direction, which I, which I think is just going to, it's just like a season thing. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't know, but he's been having me get some, uh, start getting a little political in my songs. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I mean, he gave me a, he gave me a song to write called faith and children and it, and it's pretty bold in regards to some of the political things that are going on in the world right now. Um, and it surprised me because, you know, I, I, I like to, you know, I believe that I get the motivation and the ideas and even the lyrics and things from the Lord, um, or from the Holy spirit. I like, you know, I, I like to believe that. And so it, it's kind of like, really, Lord, you want me to write this <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, but, uh, uh, but I, uh, you know, but, but he has a purpose for that. And I think it has to be with, you know, right now, uh, he, sh he's shaking the earth. I mean, I, I really believe he's shaking the earth and, you know, and things are, things are already being, beginning to become exposed. And I think that's going to continue. I mean, I really do think that's going to continue where, uh, that the truth is going to come out in a lot of this stuff and, a lot, you know, and, and it has to, because, you know, the harvest is coming. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and people, people, their eyes have got to be open uh, to the, you know, and they have to come to the realization of how deceived they've been and, and are, and, you know, uh, and so I'm all about, uh, and I think these songs are, are for that purpose to, to, to kind of help people open, you know, wow, you know, their eyes be opened up to some things. But anyway, um, and um, I actually have a, a song releasing tomorrow <laughs> on Spotify, which is called In the Spirit. And um, uh, it's really not political. It's about Jesus. And it's a, and it's a, it's just really promoting the Holy Spirit and uh, uh very positive tune and so i hope your audience will look that up on on spotify and uh, give that a listen so we'll absolutely link anything yes. we can to your mm -hmm. different platforms your music is on um actually you know what? we can touch on that right now what's the best way for people to follow along with you and connect with you um well obviously mo all of my my songs are on all the platforms you know because of the distributors and things, but I pay most attention to my Spotify account. And I have, I was telling you about my name, my artist name change. Uh, so I actually have two Spotify accounts. One is DSH cook, uh, that you would have to look up on Spotify and search. And then the other one is David Sean cook, which is what my new artist name is. And I mean, I'm in transition. So there's a lot of music, a lot of music on DSH cook and there's, four like four or five songs on david sean cook um but um obviously there's youtube and i'm still under dsh cook there and there's some videos there um and uh i'm in transition between my websites so i have a dsh cook.com and i have a david sean cook.com and they're you know so both of those kind of things but um uh and uh, I don't know. That's that's kind of how you can you can follow me and and find out what's going on. Um, I'm working on that forever email list. <laughs> so <laughs> so I love when people sign up. I wish I wish uh, people would more 
more, do more of that. So, because I like to stay in touch with people, I like to reach out and things like yes. that. So. Yeah, very important. So I'm not, I'm not unreachable. So. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I used to feel like I was, and then God sent me these amazing people like like Rick <laughs> and uh, and Deborah Scott and um, mm-hmm. Laura Hansen. Okay. Um, like we we meet a lot, and uh, you know, yeah. Ida Ida Martinez is just like so fire yeah. with her prayers and praying over this mm-hmm. group and the ministry as a whole, and. Um, it makes me feel good because I was starting to feel like I, I couldn't grow the group anymore because I was starting to feel like I couldn't keep up enough and I wanted mm-hmm. to keep that connection. So um, now that there's more people <laughs> to help, I'm like, okay. And then, and all of a sudden the group's what doubled. <laughs> yeah, really. It just keeps growing. And um, there's so many people I know that are, are thirsty for, for help. And I think the thing is like, what we were talking about, you know, earlier is like, there's so many programs and it's still like kind of like this, but we just wish it was like the, the easy flight traffic directing. It's just like this. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's right. Not necessarily a, a full streamline and um, finding ways to help people because of that, I think is very important. And that's where that networking really comes in and connecting people. And uh, one thing you made me think of David. So Sydney high, um, um, Rick Pino was talking about don't get political. I remember this very specifically. And he was saying, if you're a Christian artist, that's the death of your career, basically. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty much a good paraphrase. Right. <laughs> right yeah. I, I, I remember yeah, Sydney's she's very political with uh, her post. Too, and, and her yep. yep. What was well, I don't get political. I don't get political with posts or anything, but I, I disagree with Rick that it's, I mean, the, the Lord is telling me to get political. Well, um, I think that's the interesting thing is that, I mean, um, oh, go ahead. You know, I was just going to say that the, the church, you know, one of the, you know, why is one of the reasons the, the world is in the shape is that is today is that the church, you know, set behind the four walls and didn't get active and didn't get active in our culture. I mean, God gave us dominion over the earth and, you know, of course, Adam handed it over to the devil, but Jesus got it back, you know, when he was resurrected. And so we, we have dominion, but we're not, we, we should be running the schools. We should be, you know what I mean? We should be in politics. We should be running the schools. We should be, if we're going to take dominion, we have to be in power, right? right. We are the, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, God's, the government is on his shoulders, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, that means that, and, and we're high priests and priestesses. So, you know, we we need to be in leadership in the culture. That's the only way it's going to change, you know, so. I thought it's so but, interesting. Oh, go ahead. But what? Uh, that's, that's all I really wanted to say. I mean, we, you, you, can't, you can't just sit in church and be like, I'm, I got my bags packed. I'm looking up and I'm ready to go, Lord. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to go up to be with you. I mean, now there's a whole world out here. We're supposed to be, you it's know, we're not supposed to be experience. like the world, right. but we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be, right. you know, in control. You know, we're supposed to have, we're, we're supposed to be in control. I, I agree. Now, I, my, from my experience, I, I was very political for years on, on Facebook, Twitter. I have like 20,000 followers on Twitter. And uh, I've been suspended many times for my political post. And so as far as getting my music out there in the last two years, trying to get my music out there, I've, I've trended away from being political for that reason. So my music doesn't get sh- shut down on my music pages mm-hmm. and so forth on YouTube. And so for, I'm a, a big proponent of YouTube. I love your song, by the way, State of Grace. I want to emphasize that to everybody out there. Go check it out, State of Grace. Great song on YouTube. You can shred it on there. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> but, but it's, you know, for me, um, I've straight, I've gotten away from it just so I can make and get my music and, and just shine, be able to shine my light. I want to be able to shine a light without being shut down. So just be, yeah, I, I just want to say, just be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, in, and not, you know, don't rock the, the boat too much politically so that you don't get shut down because you know you know how it is out yeah there. and i'm not encouraging anybody to get political on facebook or instagram or any of that because i i don't i don't post 
uh, you know, political stuff. You know, it's just it's just the songs themselves, right? Uh, uh, and that's that, that's like the songs that, that, that I haven't even released yet. I've, I've got a couple coming up in the next few months that, that are a, a political. If the Lord continues having me do that kind of writing, then there'll be more. But there 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 may not be. I don't know. So um, that's what I appreciated about Sydney in a way, like whether people agree with her or not. Right. She is very passionate about what she's mm -hmm. passionate about. And she feels like this is where the Lord led her, you know, mm -hmm. whatever she blows up with followers or she has whatever followers, she's just staying in the lane. Mm -hmm. She feels is where he wants her. Right. And right. and I, I have to respect that in that, like, like Chris Greenwood, you know, manifest he's been in over 20 years and mm -hmm. he wrote a pro life song. He's like, this is what I, I believe. And basically, I think the long and short of it is that uh, Chris is big on and saying, um, basically, you know, whoever, how does that go, David? Whoever stands for nothing. Falls for anything. Yeah, something along those lines. Something like that. Yeah, he's, he's just like, you, you have to stand for something. If you have that ability to influence. I thought it was really interesting that the way um he words it because chris has gone into a few things people would say are are controversial i know he has a new cd out uh words are weapons and mm -hmm. he's got like russell brunson on there off the top of my head i mean he's got a whole bunch of people that are considered these these big wigs and uh, yeah they're they're motivational songs it's mm -hmm. different than anything he's normally done mm -hmm. and i listen to it and some people be like well what is that you know but it's really 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 encouraging to listen to what he has to say to lift you up especially um just to keep going because there's times like this like okay am i going to go the right direction on on how i'm standing mm -hmm. do i do i give up because i can't uh i can't hashtag christian or whatever it might be <laughs> and uh he is just always about you know what you keep going and when you need to pivot pivot and I think that's the thing is, um, you know, there are people on here with different beliefs and, uh, you know, some people, you know, it might be called crazy blessed worship, but there are plenty of people that listen that they are intrigued or maybe they're, they're on the fence or, you know, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But um, we have such that division in the church today, but mm -hmm. we have such world division, especially I feel like more and more in our country. So I know what Rick Pino was speaking into was the whole, um, you know, we don't want to be divisive as Christians. I, f I think that's one of the things he was getting well, at. I agree with that. Yeah. And I'm looking at like, you know, I think that's our, our number one thing today is we have a lot of people are looking at division, but like, like your heart in your song, David, that you're talking about, it's like, you literally feel that that's what the Lord put on your heart. And I think that's really important to, to really highlight in here is that there's not a purpose behind it of division. And I think right. that's, that's something we need to be very mindful of. Um, mm -hmm. And especially I'm looking at all these different Christians. They're putting out all these different messages. They're very, very powerful. And this, some of them are kind of like cringing, like, did I just do that? <laughs> 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 but yeah. um i think it's an interesting conversation just to be able to highlight that and what are we doing right. and um i think if we're always turning it to the lord like you're saying you know i'll do this for right. you right. i think in that sense he's gonna just put his blessing on whatever right. it is i agree i'm not i'm not trying to say you shouldn't do it i'm just i think i exactly right. she said she's right if god's leading you to do it and you, you have the ability to do it and he's calling you to do it then you should do it Amen. There you go. Um, and one thing I want to touch on, I want to go back to the part that you do production and you like to, to help lift other people up where you can in that area. Um, if someone wants to reach out to you about maybe getting to work with you, is your website, what, which of those websites that you mentioned would be better for them to go to? Or is there a specific, would you like them to email you? Um. Yeah, they should probably e email me at, and it, it's D S H Cook. So it's D is in David, S is in Sam, H is in Harry, C O O K, at passiontimestudios.com. 
Okay. We'll have that up on the screen here too. That is uh, my, actually the name of my, my songs are produced under that as well. So, but um, it's kind of the name of my studio, name of my publishing company, whatever. <laughs> it's what I use. I want to say, I feel like it's such a blessing when you actually get the opportunity to work with a Christian producer. I know I'm not saying one's better than the other per se, but as a Christian, Amen to that. being as a Christian, being able to better communicate, like, yes. you know, I want to be Holy Spirit led on this. You know, somebody that knows what that means is going to connect with you differently than right. someone that doesn't, for example. Exactly. Um, Rick has had a huge mm -hmm. blessing. I've told him he's hit gold where, right. you know, his producer, all, all the guys that, you know, work out of the studio and like the, the session musicians to his videographer, um, as Christians, like all of them, the way that they work together, it's just, I told them I'm kind of envious versus <laughs> like you being able to find that. And a lot of what I found mm -hmm. here is like, it's not that I haven't had talented mm -hmm. people, but to be able to have that person mm -hmm. that's going to come in and say, Hey, can we pray before we do this? I mean, all that stuff is so huge. So right. um, I'm happy to promote David and, yes. and he's been chasing the Lord. He is yes. being obedient and, mm -hmm. um, He's not going anywhere. He's he's sticking with what God put on his heart. And I just Amen. I respect and admire that yep. so much. Um, do you have anything on your heart that you'd like to share with us before we go? Um, in regards to the production or any kind of studio help that people might need, um, I want people to realize, too, that there's a lot of things that can be done remotely now. Uh, like vocals and things like that, that work, that can work in real time uh, to record them and that kind of thing. There's tools out there to do that sort of thing. Uh, so you don't physically have to be, you know, like in my studio to do something with me, you know, or with somebody else that you choose to. But uh, so I just, I want people to be aware of that, um, that kind of thing. Um and what's on my heart is just to continue to hear from the Lord. Um, uh, I want everybody to hear from the Lord. And uh, I'm sure, you know, it's, 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 uh, there's seasons we go through or that I've been through where it's like, I haven't, I'm not hearing from the Lord like I used to. What's going on? You know, <laughs> and it's very, very much. Uh, I'm very disturbed when that happens. Um, and you, you have to do a lot of inner searching. Is there something I'm doing wrong? Is there something, you know, whatever. Um, but for us to just be as obedient as we can and, 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 and don't neglect the word. Uh, and just keep marching on, moving on. So. Amen. Any last questions, Rick, before we have to surrender our time with David? No, I just think it's really important to, you know, the, his emphasis and, and mine myself. I mean, I know in the nineties, I wanted to make it, you know, and I, I, what can I do just playing by myself? I learned a bunch of country songs, you know, and try to make it as a country artist and just playing my guitar out in clubs and so, so forth. But you know, those, those dreams just like kind of f fade away when you realize it's, it's not going to happen. And, you know, God wasn't in it. And I think it's really important to realize that when you finally give up on those things that you thought would promote yourself and then get back to the point where God's going to exalt you or raise you up as you exalt him and do what he wants you to do is very important, I think, in our conversation here. I, we have some, a lot of things in common as far as that goes. Appreciate yeah. that. that yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, so, no, I've enjoyed myself today. Uh, so I enjoyed good. having you. Yes. We're glad to get to connect and yeah. we're excited to get to share you with people. And um, one thing that Rick and I would like to highlight is our friend Lynn German is working on doing a songwriting retreat. And we're trying to figure out if there is a way that Crazy Blessed Worship could be involved in that. So if you are interested in being in the Virginia Beach, Virginia area this <laughs> August, the date I should have pretty quickly here. Um, definitely reach out to us and email me at crazyblessedworship at gmail.com with songwriting retreat in the subject line. 
And we're very excited to see what comes out of that. And Rick and I, with some of our other awesome crew, have been working very hard on creating a program for people that isn't so much like this, <laughs> more like <laughs> this. If you're just not sure where to go, or even if you've been in it for a while, I think that's kind of the the nice thing is being able to to work with all levels and uh, and really just uh, leveraging the network that um, God's blessed us with. So um, on that one, if you are interested in coaching or consulting, uh, go ahead and email also crazyblessedworship at gmail.com. And drop in the comments any of your takeaways. We always love them. We know they're very encouraging for the guests we get to have on here. And, of course, again, with David, if you'd like, love, subscribe, share anything that you go check out of his. We'd really appreciate that. And, of course, we appreciate when you do that for Crazy Blessed Worship, too. And we thank you so much for joining us. And we wish you a crazy blessed day.